Today we'll be looking at how life could continue to evolve. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. Researchers have recently found microbes that have been living beneath the ocean floor for over a hundred million years and are still alive. What would change if we just had a million years to live? Two ideas come to mind right away. First, there will have to be a capping of tenure in academies. To renew their knowledge base and alleviate their old-fashioned dogmas of curriculum and science, colleges will have to restrict staff hires to a period of a century. Second, one birthday cake is impossible to accommodate one million candles. The number of birthday candles instead may represent our age's logarithm. That would mean free candles for a thousand year old. Past generations used to claim we can't delay inevitable death, so we can monitor how we live. They always claim there's nothing new under the sky. From our present viewpoint, all claims are misleading. With advancements in bioscience and development, a post-COVID-19 world can be envisioned where certain illnesses are healed and our lifespans will increase dramatically. If so, how would our priorities change and how would it affect our lives? We might achieve more aggressive activities despite the opportunity of making longer term plans. We may tend to worry more about our environmental climate and interpersonal communication since emissions or wars would bring long term hazards. An extended life experience will make us smarter and more risk averse because much more is at stake here. Sending inexperienced people into battle or starting conflicts in the first place will make no sense. Yet, success is by no way ensured except for shrewd tactics. The established link between head size and body weight, for example, has not made dinosaurs wise enough to deflect the meteor that destroyed them. Accidents are unavoidable, so recovery centers are continually busy fixing non-fatal accidents related to regular malfunctions. Increasing our reproductive cycle would raise the possibility of overpopulating the planet in relation to our lifespan. The amount of million-year old citizens could rise to an untenable amount of 100 trillion with the current birth rate per person. To mitigate it, we would include a public policy that restricts the birth rate to the amount required. Instead, travel ports might send citizens into space to offset fertility levels and sustain a sufficient terrestrial population for the food and resources available. The positive news is that space exploration will carry humanity to the closest stars using proven chemical rockets for a period of as much as a million years. To hit the living planet around Proxima Centauri, with a spaceship moving at the level of NASA's New Horizons mission will take only a hundred thousand years. To travelers who live a million years, such a ride will look much like New Horizons' decade-long voyage to Pluto within our current period of existence. During this long trip, the spaceship would of course have to have a permanent habitat and safe living conditions, so the passengers would have to maintain a positive attitude for the duration of their voyage and not lose confidence. Like a fisherman who, after a long pause without catching some fish, wonders if the true object of fishing is to actually catch fish. Yet, Proxima Centauri won't be the closest star to humanity in a million years, and then we may have other ambitions in mind. The night sky can also shift when different stars pass in and out of the sun's vicinity. Throughout this time, the Milky Way will reveal tens of thousands of bright supernovae and other transients that light up like celestial fireworks at the night. The nearest of such occurrences could present a danger to the biosphere on Earth. Because our latest inventions are progressing rapidly over a timescale of many years, a million years from now our potential world over Earth will appear radically different. How for such a long period will a developed modern civilization feel like? Will it withstand the disruptive powers that are unleashing its technologies? One way to find out is to look for tech signatures, dead or living, of alien cultures. Inevitably, these life types will go extinct. The cosmos is shrinking as it grows, and from now on all stars must die 10 trillion years. All will freeze in the near future, there will be little resources left to support life. Nonetheless, the immediate future doesn't need to be that grim. The main advantage of prolonging life is holding one's love longers around for longer. The culmination is imminent, but as the Greek philosopher Epicurus noted in his letter to Menoceus, death will not be dreaded because we never reach it, because when we are, death will not arrive, and when death does, we are not. Troublemakers would therefore live longer and be relegated to jail because of bad conduct. That was often seen by those whose libertarian was limited by society as a silver lining. Death gives absolute independence from all societal chains. 
Sadly, this liberation came too late to do something about it, because it is defined in perpetuity by the name and motto of the classic British automobile, Iris. It runs in silence. Thus, as for university probation, life terms in jail will be limited at a far shorter duration than a million years. The time span of one million years is an irrational option, equivalent to the whole duration that has occurred since our ancestor species Homo erectus appeared in Africa. It's happily slower than the world grows, the sky or the moon. By theory, we might envision an existence spanning billions of years, during which stars in the universe turn on and off, much like light bulbs do. In the context of that long-term view, our present global issues will seem as innocent as a first idea in a newborn baby's brain. If you made it this far in the video, thank you and welcome to the end of the video club. What's your take on this? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr Singularity and I'll see you on the next one.